I've got a brand new upgrade for my Kamado Joe Classic. This has proven to be one of my favorite grills, if, if not my favorite. It's just so versatile, and now it's became more versatile with the Joe Tisserie. Let me show you over here. All right, now if you look right here, this is the ring that supports the rotisserie, the spit rod, and the motor. And if you'll look here, you'll see a lip that actually goes inside of the Kamado Joe here to help center it up. Very well constructed. Just place it on here, set it down. And if you'll notice, this is shaped like a wedge. It's a lot thicker here than it is on the back, which will allow you to close the lid. making a seal to where you can do a low and slow, which I'll be doing today. Here is the motor assembly for it. Very well constructed and it's so easy. It just slips right on. You got your on off switch here. All right, now this is a spit rod. Inserts right into the motor, just like that. You'll have your meat inserted with these forks. Turn it on, you're up and rolling. I'm gonna be doing a five pound pork butt today. Last night I took some canola oil, I rubbed the pork butt down, and at that point I put some of this flying swine pork rub on it. I've used this in the past, it's a really good rub, and so that's what I chose to go with. It's going to be perfect for what I'm doing here today. Now this is a boneless pork butt, and when they remove the bone they have to cut into the meat, which kind of lays it open somewhat. So I took some butcher's twine and I trussed this pork roast up to where it'll ride better on this rotisserie. Now, also, I took and uh, put it in a vacuum seal bag. I pulled a vacuum on it, put it in the fridge overnight. That vacuum will help push and drive those seasonings deeper into the meat. So there ain't but one thing left to do. I'm gonna take my pork butt, I'm gonna stab it onto this spit, insert my forks, get it ready to rock, get it ready to roll. Also gonna fire this Kamado Joe up. Now, if you look at my configuration, I've got it banked off to one side with a lump charcoal, and that's the way you wanna set it up for the Joe Tistery. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. We're gonna close the lid and let this come up ever so slowly. I'm gonna to try to do a low and slow. Now this Kamado Joe reacts a little different than uh, what it would without the Joe Tistery because of this side hole that the spit goes in. It's not gonna be as tight a seal as what it normally would be. So that's why I'm bringing it up ever so slowly. All right, we'll be back. All right, I got my pork butt here, my five pound pork butt. As you can see, I've added in four chunks, some of them kind of small of hickory wood. Hickory is my favorite wood to go on pork, hands down. I love apple, I love cherry, but to me, hickory really brings out a good barbecue flavor. All right, we're gonna go ahead and insert this. I'm not quite up to temp. I want it to finish coming up to temp with this already in place because this spit rod here is gonna help close up this hole somewhat as you can see right here. I don't want this thing to get out of, out of control too fast. Go ahead and turn it on. All right. All right, so there's no more debate about fat up, fat down on a roast if you're using a Joe Tisserie because you have a combination of both and it's gonna be more of a self-basting effect as this, this fat begins to render. We're gonna close her up. I'm gonna be putting a mop on this probably starting at the two hour mark. We're gonna take a look at it in around two hours. Like I said, I was going to bring this up very, very slowly. I've been at this for one hour and I have leveled out. I'm actually at about 200 and, well, 225, 230, right in that range. I want to show you where I got my settings. I got my slider completely closed. I got my daisy wheel about halfway. And if you look down here at the bottom vent, I'm about three quarters of an inch open and it's, it's holding like a champ be honest with you, it's really not much different than what I'm used to without the Jotisserie on there. I'm not having a bit of problems adjusting these temperatures. So now I'm going to go ahead and make our mop. We've been going about two hours on this pork roast. I'm going to go ahead and add in one full cup of Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey. Black label. Into that, add in one half cup of light brown sugar. Going to add in two teaspoons of this Reese onion juice. This is equivalent to one size medium onion. Going to add in one quarter cup of this jalapeno ketchup. I'm 
Going to add in one quarter cup of this Steen's Pure Cane Syrup. You could also use a maple syrup in place of this, a pure maple syrup. Now you'll want to go in with two tablespoons of brown mustard. What I'm going to do now is take this Jack Daniels mop, I'm going to take it indoors to the kitchen stove, I'm going to heat it up, bring it up to a simmer, let it simmer good for about four to five minutes. All right, I'm about two hours into this. And we are still looking really good. I'm going to take this Jack Daniels mop. We're going to put its first layer and from there, we're gonna continue to mop this about every 30 minutes throughout the whole cook. All right, so I'm going on with my third coat of this mop. Look at the beautiful sheen it's putting on this. Now, another reason I'm going low and slow with this cook is because of all the sugars that's in this sauce and in the rub that I initially did on this pork roast. All right, we are at 100 almost 190 degrees it's not pulled pork tender but man it's very close this is going to be some tender pork look at the color on that going to take and remove this going to place it right here we're going to bring this inside we're going to let it rest for 10-15 minutes cool down a little bit we're going to carve into this beautiful beautiful results <laughs> with this man i am super impressed with this jotisserie it could not have done a better job look how gorgeous this thing turned out all right we're going to do the ultimate test and that is the taste test going to pull off a piece of this mm. i tell you what when you do this jack daniels mop sauce that i put on this you need not even worry about a barbecue sauce because you're going to, first off, you're going to mask over the flavors that this is putting out. This is uh, outstanding. I mean, it's delicious. A friend of mine, a few years ago, he asked me about some of my cooks I've done in the past using a Jack Daniels and bourbons and things of that nature. And he's like, man, does it taste like whiskey? I don't want my food tasting like whiskey. No, it does not. Because first thing I did is I simmered it, which burn off most alcohol then i basted this meat with it which burn off the rest of that alcohol and what it leaves behind is a condensed flavor of the process of them making the whiskey in the barrels the wood barrels it's got a real woodsy charcoal flavor to it which really enhances barbecue i would highly encourage you to give that a try on all your barbecues make you a mopping sauce like this you cannot go wrong this would be great on chicken as well i'm sitting there tasting this this would be good on chicken it's great on pork don't know about beef let me know what you, you know if you try that let me know what you think but uh overall i'm very very happy with it joe tisser like i said worked like a charm so uh hope you enjoyed the video hope you give it a try until next time smoke your ribs